Fong Tongsheng passed away due to illness, and his wife Qin Sini became depressed. She woke up again and changed her heart. The second son of the Fong family broke his head and was approached by someone. The daughter dot in dot law of Er Zhu wailed, let your second son come out and pay for my second son's life. Qin Sini staged an old white flower, tears streaming down her face. The spittle star drowned a person. You are stabbing a soft knife into the heart's nest, and the small-hearted will have no face to live. Once you die, you will prove your innocence. Compared to his injury, is human life more valuable? Are you going to compensate me for my money or my life? The villagers are discussing and saying that the good days of Fong Tongsheng's family are over. The escape road is long and unbearable. Village chief. Sister-in-law, you see there's no water left here again Qin Sini. Don't worry, I have experience with this. I'll go ahead and take a look. The village chief is looking forward to it, and has never been disappointed with his expectations. A villager quietly filled bamboo tubes village chief. Sisters, can you farm like this? Have you never heard of it before? Qin Sini. Village chief, look good. You. Village chief. Brother and sister, please pay attention to your identity. After all, my brother treated you extremely well before his death. Qin Sini. I have always wanted to live a good life and raise my child. Could it be that I have never been in love in the end of the world and have found my dear him here? Qin Sini shook her head, may it be that I was overthinking. Oh, I still don't want to. Getting rich and living a carefree life is still what I want. Keywords of the novel The whole village flees from famine and gnaws on tree bark. I have a systematic mind and no pop-ups. The whole village flees from famine and gnaws on tree bark. I have a systematic mind and no panic. Download the complete text. The whole village flees from famine and gnaws on tree bark. I have a systematic mind and no panic. Read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 The Beginning of Crossing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 the beginning of crossing Qin Sini, a post-apocalyptic superpower, dressed up as an ancient woman in her thirties after her death in battle. She discovered that in the original owner's memory, she had a son, daughter dot in dot law, and grandson. Oh my! Unexpectedly, it was pitifully worn on an old woman who had just died. At the age of 30.6, the old man is an old boy. Due to illness, he used up all his family savings and pawned everything that could be pawned. However, in a bad year, his house was leaking due to continuous rain and rain, which left him at a loss. This body is also a master who doesn't care about everything, everything is under the leadership of an old man. As soon as he left, his family couldn't afford it, and many things fell on the old lady. He suddenly became depressed and fell ill, and he died like this. When he woke up again, he changed his mind. Qin Sini looked at such a dilapidated house and tattered clothes, and saw that the owner, who had a yellow and skinny face, was a rare owner who didn't do farm work. When Qin Sini was still in a daze, she heard a squeak and the dilapidated door opened with a trembling sound. Qin Sini's eldest daughter dot in dot Lotsuafen walked in gently and said, Mom, are you awake? I just made some goosebump soup get up and have some. Placed on the Kong table, she quickly came to help Qin Sini. Qin Sini glanced at Suifen with her eyes and replied, Hmm, okay, help me sit up. She leaned against the large wooden box on the Kong and saw the tender and watery bumps on her face, which left her with no appetite at all. Two small heads protruded from the door, staring at the noodle soup, swallowing saliva, and then secretly glancing at their grandmother. Qin Sini felt heartbroken for a moment and said, Dajuang, Jiajia, come here. You too, come and drink this bowl of goosebump soup. Milk, we're not hungry, said two delicate voices. Mother, how can we do this? You're not in good health. Hurry up and drink some to replenish your health. 
The two little dolls can eat anything, Chui Fen hurriedly said. At this moment, De Zhuang hurriedly said with unclear speech, Thank you, Grandma. Grandma is the best. Seeing her former owner's favorite grandson, Qin Sini sighed and said, Let's eat, let's eat. It's time to grow up and go eat with my sister. Grandma, my younger brother and I don't want to eat. Please eat quickly. If you get sick, you'll get better soon. Jia Jia glared at her younger brother. My younger brother shrunk his neck and whispered, Milk, Grandma. Qin Sini sighed lightly and said, Grandma is feeling uncomfortable and can't eat anymore. When it gets cold, it won't taste good anymore. Hurry up and eat it. When I feel like eating, I'll let your mother cook it. The siblings looked at their own mothers. The eldest daughter. In dot law looked at her mother dot in dot law and said in a wooden voice, Mom, keep it for later when we'll heat it up for you. The child is wasting it. Chin Sini glared angrily and said, Why is it that your father has just left, so I don't have much weight to say? I'll give it as soon as I say, so don't nag me. The eldest daughter dot in dot law hesitated and said, Mom, that's not what I meant. Don't blame me, little ones. Thank you grandma quickly and go eat on the side. They sweetly said, Thank you, grandma. You rest well, we're out. Chin Sini let out a faint sigh and waved her hand to let them go. Looking at his daughter dot in dot law, he said, You go out too, boss. I want to lie down for a while longer. I'm feeling tired all over. Don't let those brats disturb me, I want to rest well. Chui Fen replied slowly, Hey, good mother, then I'll go out and get busy first. After Chui Fen finished speaking, she gently left and casually closed it. Chui Fen saw De Zhuang and Jia Jia eating noodle soup one by one, and felt a pang of sadness. She thought to herself, although my father dot in dot law's life was not so good, I could still afford a bowl of noodle soup. Now, these noodles have become a luxury. The two children saw their mother come out, and Jia Jia and Da Zhuang quickly gathered around and said, Mother, you eat, it's so delicious. Chui Fen felt heartbroken for a moment. Take your time and make some food for you next time. I'm not interested in asking for more. This is because your milk hurts you, otherwise it should be said that you are unfilial. Your grandmother is sick, and she takes a bite. You also snatch it, and it's not good for your reputation to be exposed. The two children whispered, Okay mother, we know now. We won't dare anymore. We'll take the delicious food to grandma first. The eldest daughter dot in dot law and said, Hmm, well behaved, go eat. I'm going out to the mountains to see if there's anything else I can find to eat. Jia said, Okay mother, let's listen to grandma at home. Don't make grandma angry, you can rest assured to go. Chin Sini heard nothing outside, probably two children eating noodles quietly. I thought to myself, the two children are pretty good, not bad-willed, and I guess they were really hungry before we had those words. I can finally think quietly about something. That's great. In Chin Sini's mind, there were still threads of obsession lingering in her mind, probably because the original owner died and felt uneasy. She murmured, Don't worry, I will protect your family for you. Since I have taken over your body and benefited from you, I will do my best to help the family live a good life. Perhaps with my promise, it has gradually disappeared. Perhaps the original owner also loved his children. The original owner was also fortunate during his lifetime. When he was young, he lived carefree in a eunuch's family, with no worries about food and clothing. He also knew how to play music, chess, calligraphy, and painting. But the good times didn't last long. When the original owner was fifteen years old, he suffered a sudden change and was killed by his enemies. Only she and the wet nurse escaped to heaven, and there was also a younger brother who was studying abroad. That day, the original owner was extremely frustrated and let the wet nurse and her secretly go out without disturbing anyone, otherwise it would be difficult to escape death. When they returned, they saw a bloody garden full of blood, and their home was looted. When there was no one to return, 
they suddenly fainted. If it weren't for the wet nurse packing up some valuable clothes and carrying the original owner on her back, she would have fled this land of trouble, otherwise it would have been difficult to escape and ascend to heaven. I couldn't contact my biological younger brother who was studying abroad. With a sigh, I can't find it, I can only travel far away. Afterwards, he stopped walking and fled all the way to a remote small mountain village, where he took root and married the only child in the village. The child had always shown great care for the original owner and was at the forefront of everything. As soon as the old man left, the original owner also followed, offering a discount to Chin Sini, a post-apocalyptic superpower whose soul pierced here. I don't know if Chin Sini wants to be happy or sad. Is it happy that she has regained her life, or is it sad that she has worn on such an old lady, who cannot lift her hands or carry her shoulders? Chin Sini is thinking about when she can regain her freedom in life, live a comfortable life without worrying about food and clothing. She felt a headache when she thought of the information left by the original owner and a bunch of bad things, and couldn't help but sigh, fortunately, I am an apocalyptic superpower. If I come here, I will be safe. It is probably because the heavens saw that I died too wrongly, allowing me to experience the joy of life again in ancient times. I have come to live in ancient times. Suddenly, she thought to herself, by the way, I need to quickly find the universal palm treasure. I thought that when I perished, the universal palm treasure fell, and I don't know if it was retrieved by my space. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Finding Your Own Ability Space You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Finding Your Own Ability Space Chin Sini was a first-level superpower in the apocalypse, awakened to spatial superpowers, and was able to store a lot of things. Among their comrades, they are still quite popular, and most of her comrades awaken aggressive abilities. To carry a large amount of food, weapons, equipment, and other supplies, Chin Sini is needed, which highlights her importance. During the life and death battle, Chin Sini awakened an important ability, the plant growth skill, which made her a second-level superpower. Her ability is extraordinary in the apocalypse. If each group has a superpower who can farm in space, it becomes a key protected object of the group. Because this is related to the survival of the entire group, then this group can have a foothold in the cruel apocalypse. In the apocalypse it is extremely cruel, with resource scarcity and food competition being difficult. I don't know if it was because the other party learned that Chin Sini had this special ability that they desperately snatched her away. If they didn't get it, they would destroy her. Therefore, she sadly left with the wind it is estimated that the heavens saw Chin Sini die unjustly and gave her a chance to be reborn. How precious! Gollum, Gollum! And disharmonious voice rang out. I don't know how long Chin Sini has been hungry. My stomach is barking a bit hard. Chin Sini eagerly took out a bag of bread from the space and ate it in large bites. Due to eating too quickly, I choked suddenly. I almost choked her to death because of this little food, so I became the first superpower to be choked to death, uh -huh. Hurriedly took out another bottle of milk from the space, drank it in big gulps, and rushed down, otherwise choking would be a pity. After eating and drinking enough, she nervously remembered that this was not the end of the world and that she could not act recklessly. I quickly looked around and found that everything was quiet and there was no one around. She quickly cleaned up the battlefield and retrieved the remaining bottles of bread and paper from the space, thinking to herself, my secret must not be known by anyone else. Otherwise, what should I do if I were caught as a monster again? Chin Sini has eaten her fill, then lie comfortably under the blanket and have a good sleep. He felt this feeling was really good, carefree, and hoped that in this world, there would be no dark and endless battles like in the apocalypse. And then living her life like this, she felt quite free and at ease. Well, not bad, let's start a wonderful life. Ha ha ha, are you really still there? Chin Sini thought to herself. Then her consciousness came into the space. The space was so awesome that it helped me get back the treasure in my hand. 
The treasure in my hand lay quietly on the workbench beside me, and hurried to check. Is the treasure in my hand damaged? It's good, but nothing happened. It's okay to start up. It's good, so I finally feel relieved. Her palm treasure here is even more comprehensive than an encyclopedia, from astronomy and geography to literary knowledge. There are only things that you can't imagine, such as the styles, functions, and functions of various plants, the extraction of iron, literature, science and engineering, etc., all stored inside. This is a must-have for those with apocalyptic powers. With it, nothing is a problem, it's just to see the treasure in your hand. Hee hee, hee hee. Chin Sini looked at her and couldn't help but laugh out loud. She continued to check and found a storage space of 2,000 square meters. She started checking things and then put them back together. All kinds of bread, mantu, beef jerky, canned beef, canned fish, compressed biscuits, guns, bullets, crossbows, nuclear warheads, remote control explosives, bulletproof clothing, various emergency supplies, daily necessities, miscellaneous items, etc. are placed on the shelf row by row, and no one is missing after checking with his mind. Chin Sini was extremely happy when she saw these things and said, with these things, she can have no worries about food and clothing, and self.defense is also not a problem. That's because the old hen is tough enough to carry a gun. In this ancient Bronze Age, it was so easy to walk horizontally. She probably just thought about it, after all, she still has a big family, and space cannot survive. Of course, Chin Sini is its owner and can come and go freely without any problem. Where is Chin Sini going to try her second level ability now? With this thought in her heart, she appeared in front of an invisible facade and pushed open to see her second level ability growth space. She was extremely excited. This was a life that saving treasure. Seeing about two or three acres of land, she couldn't help but feel disappointed. It was too little, right? There is an inconspicuous thatched cottage on the edge of the wasteland, with a clear spring next to it. The rest of the place is barren. She was secretly regretful in her heart, but unfortunately she didn't store the seeds. Now she is extremely regretful that she should have collected more seeds at that time, otherwise she can try this growth ability space. She doesn't have any other good way, she can't go back to the end of the world, and can only slowly find suitable seeds from the outside world to conduct experiments bit by bit. Chin Sini finished looking at her own space and began to sort out the information of the original owner. Thinking back in my mind, I am very satisfied with the fact that my original name coincides with my name, both named Chin Sini. It seems that God's arrangement must have profound implications. Her husband's surname is Fong, and the deceased old man's name is Fong Yusheng. Below her is her eldest son Fong Xiaoguang, who is 20 years old this year. Her second son Fong Xiaoming is 17 years old, her third son Fong Xiaolei is 13 years old, and her fourth son Fong Xiaolei is 8 years old, with the intention of being fair and upright. Her youngest daughter Fong Wanru is 6 years old, leaning on a swing, and her demeanor is like yesterday, Nailin Shingas, the tea bottle, Fong Yusheng deliberately embodies the elegance of a literati, truly envious of the children in the village. Most of the children in the village have simple rural style names such as De Dan, Er Dan, De Nai, Er Nai, De Hua, De Yu, Shur Shur, Dun Zi, and so on. It seems that Fong Yusheng has not read books for so many years in vain, and Qin Sini is quite satisfied with the names of the children. The naming standards of the eldest son of the original owner are far from those of his father. His granddaughter Jia, Jia is four years old this year, and his grandson Da Zhuang is two and a half years old. The other few didn't marry a wife, each one was alone. Ah, Qin Sini sighed inwardly, I'm such a hypocritical woman, I'm so far away. Qin Sini thought, next, as a mother, I'm going to have a family meeting for them. Ha ha ha, she laughed again, it seemed like she got into the role quickly. She continued to think calmly, it's quite new for me in my twenties to be the mother of five gourd babies, and I just stepped over the stage of getting married and having children and became a grandmother all of a sudden. Oh, 
I haven't tasted the taste of a man yet. Oh, then I can only be a fake mother and a single dog for a lifetime. Let's take a closer look. I heard your mother say you've woken up. Are you resting inside? A rough man's voice rang out in the yard. Jiajia looked at her younger brother and said, Hmm, yes, dad. That's really great, I'll go see your milk, the man said as he walked up the room. Milk doesn't allow us to disturb his rest, Jiajia whispered. Qin Sini heard the commotion outside and said, Xiao Guang has returned. Come in, I just woke up. She tried to speak in the original owner's tone. Ah, good mother, Feng Xiaoguang said as he pushed the door with heavy steps. Qin Sini said weakly, what's going on outside now? Hey, ever since daddy. Feng Xiaoguang suddenly felt that he shouldn't mention daddy. He immediately stopped talking, feeling embarrassed and unsure of what to do. Qin Sini pretended to press the corner of her eye and said, if it's okay, I've already thought about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to wake up. I'll go with your father long ago. Since the heavens don't accept me, there seems to be some reason. Qin Sini pretended to sob again, since your father has gone, the living people still have to live a good life. Except your other brothers and sisters, they haven't married yet. It's not time for me to die. Now tell me what's going on outside. The world outside is hard to describe, and Feng Xiaoguang is melancholy, not knowing how to express himself. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Difficulties in the World You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Difficulties in the World Feng Xiaoguang scratched his head and frowned, saying, In recent years, the country has been heavily taxed and has been fighting for years. This year, there has been another drought, and it is estimated that there will not be much relief grain transported from the national treasury. Today, I went to the village chief's house to inquire about the situation, and the situation is really not optimistic. We are still a bit better here. After all, we still rely on the mountains and can go to the mountains to find some food. In other places without mountains, the seedlings in the fields have basically withered. It is estimated that there is no hope for food this year. The grain shops in the town charge one price a day, and there are several houses in the village that run out of grain and are ready to sell their children. The village chief said he wants to go and see the situation, but I'm coming back to see if my mother is awake. Let's come and make an idea. We used to discuss it with my father, but now, I have to trouble my mother. Chin Sini pondered and said, before, I didn't care about anything. Your father was worried about everything, and you're not young anymore. Can you tell me what you think first? Feng Xiaoguang didn't have much talent for reading since he was young, he just followed his father to read some books, recognized some words, and didn't continue reading anymore, tending to the crops at home. Feng Xiaoguang smiled foolishly and said, I think the village chief's intention is to escape the famine. Mother, should we also prepare? The fourth brother Xiaolua's bundle repair has also expired this month. At this time, the wheat seedlings in the fields have withered, and there is nothing left to pawn at home. Only the father's book is still there, but the father said that these cannot be kept for future generations. Qin Sini said, well, you're right. When they all come back tonight, we'll have a meeting. What? Meeting. Feng Xiaoguang felt a bit confused. Qin Sini secretly exclaimed that it was terrible and careless. Then she helped her forehead and said, Oh, we all sat down and said, Can we brainstorm? Let's see if there's any good way, let's talk about it. And since we don't have much food at home, we can't last long. Feng Xiaoguang nodded as he listened to his mother's words, which made sense. Okay, mom, please rest for now and come back to see you when they come back. Well, let's go. Qin Sini began to ponder. Although I have everything, I can't just take it out casually. If someone with a heart finds out, I'll be in big trouble. I remember in the apocalypse, there was a type of fried noodles where the flour was cooked and it looked like a yellowish-brown color, similar to the color of the miscellaneous grains here. This way, 
It was more I dot catching and more convenient to eat. I still need to go to the original owner's nanny's place, which is more convenient. For so many years, the original owner's nanny has always claimed to be the original owner's mother, and it has not aroused anyone's suspicion. Moreover, there is no one else there, and there are many people there who are too busy to make mistakes. Chin Sini thought so and quickly took action. She began rummaging through boxes and cabinets, found a torn cloth bag in her hand, got up, put on clothes, and went out. Jiujia was playing in the yard when she saw Chin Sini. She ran over and said, Grandma, do you want to go out? Let me follow you. After lying down for so long, I'm afraid I won't be able to walk steadily. Let me support you. No need, I'll go to your grandmother's house, it's not far either. You just need to take good care of the house at home, Chin Sini waved to Jia Jia. Chin Sini walked slowly with a torn cloth bag as she spoke. Chin Sini's specific body. I don't have much strength now. I finally walked to the wet nurse's house based on the memory of the original owner. Pushing the door open, the house was spotless and spotless, but there wasn't much furniture either. Her mother naturally exclaimed, as if she had practiced many times. Although she was not her biological mother, after so many years of habit, she spoke very fluently. The wet nurse of the original owner quickly welcomed her out. I just went to see you sleeping today, and it made me feel uncomfortable. I had planned to visit you this afternoon, but now you're better. If you want to be more optimistic, the good days are still ahead, so many children are still waiting for you to take care of. Chin Sini tried her best to use the tone of the original owner and said, Mom, I'm not doing well. I'll come and see you soon. Although I still don't have the strength all over now, I'll just take care of it. Although Mr. Lang has gone, you're right after all, there are still so many children around. The wet nurse smiled contentedly and said, yes, just think like that. The child is not even an adult yet, and I'm an old bone. What should I do if you go? Chin Sini comforted her and said, yes, I won't come over and discuss with you. The outside world is not good now, so we need to think of countermeasures early. Chin Sini dragged the heavy cloth bag in her hand, which had just been packed before entering the door. It was all white flour inside, and as she looked too white, she casually spread a lot of buckwheat flour on it, making it difficult to see. Chin Sini shook the bag in front of the wet nurse and said, Mom, this is some flour I saved before. Let's quickly fry it and wait for it to escape the famine. We'll wait for it to taste on the way. I don't feel at ease frying it elsewhere. The wet nurse reached out to take the cloth bag and said, Hmm, I also have some here. I'll take them out together and stir fry them all together. This way, it's also convenient to eat on the road. It's not possible to take them out all day to cook, which would cause more trouble and attention. You're not in good health, sit down and rest for a while. When my uncle was here before, you didn't have to worry about these things. Now the world is probably going to be chaotic, and we need to get ready quickly. You said you're also in poor health. He carried such a heavy load of noodles on his own, so he's not afraid of getting tired. The wet nurse chattered while working. Although life used to be not very good, with my uncle around, at least you don't have to think or do anything, and you don't have to worry about food and drink. But now it's so good that a big family is waiting for you to worry and make up your mind. That's the second son in your family. Oh my, he can't do well in reading and farming. He just idles around all day. This is not a solution. You didn't care before, but now that his son dot in dot law is gone, no one can take care of him. The eldest brother is still filial, while the third brother is like the second brother. He follows his second brother around all day without any serious matters. Chin Sini felt warm in her heart and said, Mom, it's okay. The heavens have made me come back to life again. I think it must have profound meaning. I think it's also good. Anyway, I'm their mother and mother dot in dot law, and they don't listen to me. So let's give them a meal of bamboo shoots and stir-fried meat. 
In today's society where filial piety is above heaven, they dare to go against the heavens. The wet nurse said, well, that's the same reason you're talking about. Xiao Si is quite clever, and now he doesn't have the money to continue his studies. It's really difficult in this world. His son dot and dot law left so early, leaving behind this big family, the old and young. Although he used to earn a little money for the children's enlightenment outside, he couldn't afford this big family to be so extravagant. Now he's in this situation again. When you're a daughter, you still have a few pieces of jewelry, otherwise you can take them out and pawn them. I thought one was to keep a memory, and the other was a proof of recognition if your younger brother lives. I took it out as a pawn. I see how unlucky it is for us to escape from famine this time. Our previous escape was just a matter of having some silver in hand, otherwise it wouldn't have been so smooth. At that time, it was still a good time, and now it's a big family with no money or food in hand. I think it's difficult. Chin Sini pondered for a moment and said, don't take it out. His father is seriously ill and has taken care of all the valuable things in the family. I only have one or two pieces of jewelry left for you to keep. It's better to keep them away. Otherwise, buying too much food will be I. Catching. If we really want to escape, we should have some emergency measures. Keep it, there will be a way to get to the front of the mountain by car. Mother, mother, it's not good. The second son broke Fong Ergu's head. The eldest wife shouted as she ran. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 The Stubborn Second Brother You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 The Stubborn Second Brother Qin Sini saw her eldest wife Tsuifen running over in a panic. What's the fuss? What's going on? said sternly Chuifen gasped for breath and said, Mom, I'm not sure about the specifics. When I saw many people in our family, I asked and found out that it was my second son who broke Fomer Guzzi's head. So I quickly came to find my mom. Ah, what's going on here? Let's go home and take a look, Chin Sini sighed heavily. At this moment, Chin Sini's heart was filled with immense sorrow. She had just arrived in this world, and with so many troublesome things, it was really not easy for her. The wet nurse shouted behind Sini, Sini, Sini needs to slow down. When did she become so popular? Stay calm and don't get angry. Chin Sini didn't look back and said leisurely, I understand. It's okay, this little thing doesn't anger me. Chin Sini stabilized her mind and thought about how the original owner handled such a trivial matter. I searched for some memories, but there was nothing. It seems that things like this are usually done by an old man. She let out a sigh and walked leisurely. She was inwardly slandering, wondering how the old man of the original owner, who was a child, raised this naughty bag. Fortunately, the original owner didn't show much in front of people, otherwise it wouldn't have been good for her to show her true colors this time. Fortunately, the old man went and she couldn't get up at all. It could have been a big change in temperament, or it could have been possible. This is also a good excuse. Chin Sini comforted herself in this way. Well, then let's follow her ideas. It is estimated that the original owner did encounter such a situation and did not know how to handle it. As I walked and thought, it didn't take long to arrive. At this moment, people were all discussing and pointing around. I don't know who shouted, the Yuxing family is here. Chin Sini tried to use the original owner's soft voice and said, Everyone, please make way. Although the voice was not loud, everyone heard it and turned to look at Chin Sini, who couldn't help but make way for a gap and pushed her through the middle. What's going on? Chin Sini hasn't finished speaking yet. Fong Daju's family immediately said a lot of things, but they didn't hear anything. Chin Sini saw that Fong Ergu's head was really broken and interrupted the Daju family, saying, Aunt Daju, please calm down first. That bastard, go and run for your aunt and invite Dr. Zhang to the neighboring village. From the Yuxing family, look at your second son beating our second dog. Take a look, this head looks like this. 
Deju's daughter dot in dot law splashed while speaking rolling on the ground. I'm not alive anymore, I'm not alive anymore. Let your second son compensate my second dog. Fate, call out your second son, and I'll take him to see Master Qin Tian. The old women in this rural area are really giving people a headache when they start splashing. Qin Sini saw this scene, her head buzzing as she lifted all her strength and shouted loudly, Have you had enough trouble? If you have something to say, why bother to do it? Our second son is here. Qin Sini's voice surprisingly left everyone present in silence. De Zhu's wife also stopped crying. Er Guzi was squatting on the ground, holding his head in both hands and trembling. At this moment, the boss twisted the second son's ear and walked in from outside, Mom, I got the second son of a bear thing back. Qin Sini looked at her second son, who was covered in dirt, with dried blood on his nose, scratches on his face, and a rebellious expression on his face. Staring fiercely at him, he said, Second, come over and tell me why this is all about. Feng Xiaoming glanced at his mother and looked surprised. Mother, you're awake. I'm asking you a question. Qin Sini glared at him, Oh, oh, when I was wandering outside and heard him say bad things about you, I beat him up. He should have beaten him up. You heartless and unreasonable person, why don't you just say a word? You have arms and legs, how could you hit me so hard? Look at what you've done to me. The second person glared fiercely at the trembling second dog with his head in his arms. The second person waved his fist and said, In the future, you will say I will continue to beat you, and I will beat you even harder. Second, come on, just say a few words less, he said sternly, Everyone, take a look, take a look, take a look at this generous person, my fellow villagers. Take a look at me, this poor second son of a dog. Everyone, give me a review. De Zhu's wife cried and howled. My mind is buzzing. Alas, this rural mess is so annoying. In the apocalypse, there weren't so many bullshit stories. If there was anything you didn't listen to, just start doing it. It's so bad now, it's so annoying to have to argue with the old ladies. Second, what did Air Guzi say? Let me hear it. Feng Xiaoming stuttered and said, Mother, mother, nothing, nothing. He looked at how his mother, who used to never speak loudly before, suddenly changed. Qin Sini glanced sideways at the second person and said, All right, stop talking and speak quickly. That's to say, um, you, you're so good. Looking, you definitely can't resist loneliness. It's not just a matter of pretending to be sick and having fun at home. Without my father, you can still climb up to a better position. When you were young, you married the most outstanding Yuxing in the village based on your own looks. Now, the middle-aged Sun Yang has more charm and is even more capable of flirting with people. Anyway, she even said something even worse. He should be beaten up, he's too light, and has the face to come and look for, ah bah. Qin Sini wants to play a prank and become a little white flower again. Then she pressed the corner of her eye with a rough handkerchief and sobbed. In fact, she didn't feel too sad, so she could only secretly apply some chilly water. Fortunately, she had space, otherwise it would be really difficult for her to do anything. I sobbed and said, as the head of the family, my bones are not yet cold. I can't bear to fall ill, so I have these young people arrange for me. This is to make me die. Although she didn't roll around like the Zhu's wife, tears streamed down her face. People looked at her, and this person who usually doesn't even know how to speak loudly could cry so sadly and deeply. Qin Sini continued to sob, Master, why don't you take me away? Stay here and let them choreograph me, lie down at home, and they still throw dirty water on me. How can you bear it? You really shouldn't let me come back to life, otherwise I would be so good to go with you. The crowd began to discuss one after another, if someone said that to me, I would slap him in the face. Although it was a bit harsh, who should have let him owe a beating? It's just that, although his second son is generous, he really did the right thing this time. If they say that to me, 
I'll have my son beat him up hard. Besides, he didn't beat him up for no reason. Who would make him break his mouth and say she's an old lady? Dot. Upon hearing the discussions in the crowd, Chin Sini felt amused in her heart. In this world, people sympathize with the weak. When they see Air Guzi beaten to the head and bleeding, they say that Chin Sini doesn't know how to discipline children. Now when I see Chin Sini crying out of breath, I feel that she is quite pitiful. Ha ha ha, in this world, it seems that little white flower is still useful. No, 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 she should call it Lao Bai Hua now. Before De Zhu's wife could start throwing tantrums again, the outside shouted, Hey, big guy, let me go. The doctor is here. From afar, I saw the doctor as an old man with a gray beard, trembling and gasping for breath as he was being pulled away by others. At first glance, I saw Air Guzi crouching on the ground with his head in his arms. Is this a newcomer who wants to watch? The Zhu's daughter dot in dot law grabbed Dr. Zhang's hand and said, Doctor, you're here. If you don't come again, my son will bleed to death. All right, stop pulling and tugging, let go, I'll go take a look. Then he shook his hand and walked over. Doctor, doctor, please, 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 said the Zhu's daughter dot in dot law with a smirk the doctor here is quite respected. Everyone has a disease or disaster, so we have to hire a doctor. There is still no one who dares to offend the doctor. Take your hands away, I'll show you. Dr. Zhang felt a bit speechless when he saw his head beaten to a pig's head. The Zhu's daughter dot in dot law stared at the doctor's actions without blinking, as if afraid of accidentally harming his son. Dr. Zhang. Hey, this situation looks quite frightening. Then he stroked his beard and said, This situation is not big. What's the matter? isn't the doctor good? Oh, my dear son. De Zhu's wife interrupted the doctor's words and began to wail again. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. Claims for Compensation. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Claims for Compensation Dr. Zhang rolled his eyes in silence and said, Shut up, if you don't shut up, I'll leave. The doctor looked at the wound and said, although it looks quite miserable, it's actually some skin injuries. It's okay to get some clean water. Chin Sini quickly instructed the eldest daughter dot in dot law, first daughter dot in dot law, first daughter dot in dot law, go fetch a basin of clean water to give to Dr. Zhang. Chui Fen replied, hey, how nice to come to my mother. Dr. Zhang nodded at Tsui Fen and said, put the water here. Tsui Fen. Okay. Just leave it here, Dr. Fong. Dr. Zhang nodded, gesturing for Tsuifen to take action, and then began cleaning the wound bit by bit. Hey, hey, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. De Zhu's daughter dot in dot law's face twitched in pain and she said, Doctor, please be gentle. Look, my second son is in pain. Dr. Zhang glared at De Zhu's wife and said, If you want to come and help him, then you can come and do it. De Zhu's daughter dot in dot law chuckled in a casual manner. No, 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 doctor, you're still here. Dr. Zhang's movements in his hand did not stop, he continued to clean up, and after finishing, he applied a layer of gray powder on the wound. Dr. Zhang painted the wound and tidied up the medicine box, saying, All right, well, that's it. There's no need to wrap it up and let it air dry for a few days. His face will swelling down. Well, just wait for the scab to fall off, it's okay. There's a possibility of leaving a small scar, but it will fade in a few years. All right, there's nothing else. I'll leave first. Let's see who pays the bill. Dr. Zhang packed the medicine box and calmly waited to take the money and leave. Your second son has beaten us two dogs like this, of course you have tied the knot. Hurry up and pay the doctor, shouted the daughter dot in dot law of De Zhu in a hoarse voice. Chin Sini trembled all over and took a step forward. Although I called you a doctor, I looked at how badly Air Guzi was injured. Poor that child, his mother only knows how to howl but doesn't ask the doctor to take care of the child. 
If there is a sequela, how will I live for the rest of my life? If you say that he scolded me, you still have to compensate me for my mental damage. The Zhu's daughter. In. Law pointed at Qin Sini with a crossover and said, What's cursing you for? It's not painful or itchy, and there's also a mental loss fee. How could that be said? Qin Sini repeated her old trick and pressed the corner of her eye with a handkerchief. Tears streamed down her face as she said, As the saying goes, the spittle star drowned a person. You are stabbing a soft knife into the heart's nest. If that person with a small heart doesn't have the face to live, they will prove innocent in death. Compared to his injury, is human life more valuable? Are you going to compensate me for my money or my life? You are such a force of words, you are. De Zhu's wife trembled and didn't know how to refute. Qin Sini said without any cowardice, then let's find the village chief to judge. Your son was at fault first. Although my son hit a bit harder, he still owes a lot and should be hit. She ignored her and started talking nonsense, then you hit my son, I want to fight him back. My son scolded you, and you scolded him back without hurting or itching. This will take half of your life. How much good food do you need to eat to make up for it? I haven't asked you for nutritional compensation yet. The villagers around began to discuss one after another, when did this jade daughter dot in dot law become sharp-tongued? She usually looks at the main gate without leaving the second gate, so she is also quite a powerful master. Or did the old man suddenly change his mood after he died? Well, it's possible, it's possible. That Yuxing is really afraid of freezing when holding his wife in his hand, and afraid of melting when holding her in his mouth. Now, no one hurts or loves her, and the remaining eldest son is still a foolish and filial one. The second and third sons are just slackers, wandering around all day without doing anything serious. Hey, didn't I hear that he's quite hard-working, young and old? Ah, uh, yes, yes, his old son is indeed very talented. Well, his brain is even better than his father's. It's not a bad time now, and you can't even read this book. Now that it's not raining, the crops in the field have dried up. Where did he come from to study? Blind this child. Who said it's not? Look at how big this year is, I don't understand anything. How can I support this family? Yes, yes. Speaking fluently, the village chief walked in from outside. The village chief said in a high voice, Everyone, let me go over there. Oh, hello. The Zhu's wife grabbed the village chief's pants and said, Village chief, although you are the eldest brother of the Yuxing family, you have to make decisions for me. You can't favor his second son. Look at how my son is injured. If you don't make decisions for me, I will crash and die here. My son has no life, and I won't live either. What's the noise about? Shut up. Didn't you hear what Dr. Zhang said? It's just a skin injury that looks scary, and it won't bleed in a few days. Now that I'm hungry and my chest is against my back, I still have time to argue here. With so much free time, why don't you hurry up the mountain to dig some vegetables? I think you're still full and doing nothing, just talking nonsense. Hey, Dr. Zhang, how much do you think this will cost? Dr. Zhang calmly and confidently looked at the village chief and said, There isn't much medicine, so let's give it fifteen one. The Zhu's daughter. In. Law's eyes widened and she said, What? My family doesn't have a penny, we still have fifteen cents. We don't even have enough food now, where did we get fifteen cents? The village chief sternly said, I don't have money to use grain to offset it. Do you know how much this grain costs per kilogram now? Coarse grain, where are you still 15 won per kilogram? Fong Daju, has Daju come? Go to your house to get 1 kilogram of coarse grain to give to people. Do you still want the doctor to treat you in the future, Dr. Zhang? Daju's wife still reluctantly said, Hey hey, village chief, why are you so biased? I'm biased. Well, in the future, if someone pokes your spine and says you're not serious, then you let them talk. 
They didn't make a fuss, you went to make a fuss first, that's really good, right? Make a fuss, make a fuss, make a fuss, what's the fuss about? If you make a fuss about the Yuxing family, you'll be fine. Don't forget that Yu Qian was a child before he passed away, and he could get along with the officials. He received so much favor from him one by one before, and now such a small matter is going on here endlessly. Is it cool for people to leave tea? Do you want me to point it on your face? The incident between Nian and Wang Dehai's family in the neighboring village was not solved by someone else's Yusheng. Yusheng saved face, gained favor, and even paid out of his own pocket to solve the problem. Why is Yusheng gone? You haven't given us any money before. Yusheng knows that it's not easy for everyone, and he didn't want it. Why can't we expose this small matter a gasping man ran over, who was De Zhu. He quickly apologized and said, Village chief, please calm down, village chief. This stinky woman really owes a lot. I'll teach her a lesson later. I'll go home and get a pound of coarse grain. Then, he went home while jogging and muttering. The village chief turned to look at the crowd and said, All right, all right, everyone has dispersed. What should we do and what should we do? If we're too busy, hurry up and find something to eat. We're burning our brows and still have some leisure time to watch the excitement. Do you still think things are not too big? Let's all disperse. The bustling crowd slowly dispersed, and they did whatever they wanted until there was no more excitement to watch. The wife of the Li family hesitated and comforted, Yuxing's sister. In. Law, if you want to be more open. Minded, we still have to live without anyone. There are also a bunch of children below that need your attention. You can't fall down. If it's okay, I'll leave first. If there's anything I can do, I'll definitely help. Then, she turned back a few steps and left. Many people who had benefited from the old man who owned it all smiled in a casual manner. She comforted Chin Sini a few words and hurriedly left. Chin Sini nodded at them with a smile and said, Thank you everyone. It seems that people are not the kind of people without conscience, but now they are all poor and some things are beyond their control. Due to the pitiful lack of food nowadays, such a big man's legs are floating, oh. It's not easy. Seeing the Zhu running panting heavily, village chief, this is one pound of coarse grain. Do you like it? The village chief patted his back and said, hey. It's not easy. Hurry up and invite the doctor for Zhang. Dr. Zhang reached out to take the grain, weighed it, and thought it was about the same amount before saying, that's it. Use grain as the top, and now the grain is also very precious. If it's okay, then I'll leave first. Okay, Dr. Zhang, hurry up and get busy with your work. Looking at the disappearing figure in the distance, my heart is filled with all emotions. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 The Beginning of Escape from Wilderness You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 The Beginning of Escape from Wilderness The village chief pouted at De Zhu and said, De Zhu, hurry up and take air go and your wife's house. I know you're not easy, so I'll find some food to eat when I have time. I'll give you a message. We're probably going to flee. If you can prepare, prepare quickly. Hey, good village chief. De Zhu quickly nodded and watched as his wife stood still in place. He quickly picked up his wife and two dogs and walked home. You said you stinky girl, why are you so immature? It's just a little skin injury, it's embarrassing here. Er Zhu's wife shook Er Zhu's hand. I'm not doing this for the sake of this family. Now that we have nothing to eat or drink, should we pay for Air Guzzi's medical treatment ourselves? How can we live these days? Air Zhu waved his fist and said, Shut up, stinky girl. Go back and see how I'll deal with you. Didn't you see the village chief say that you can't live anymore? You're still there, howling in anger. Why don't you go find some food to eat? The daughter dot in dot law of Air Zhu shrank her neck, knowing that although the child was also in pain. I have also applied the medicine, 
it's not a big deal, that's all I can do. Then he followed De Zhu home in a gloomy manner. The village chief found a chair to sit down and chatted with Qin Sini here. These days, I've been running around and inquiring about a lot of news in the county town. The neighboring counties haven't had a good time in recent years, especially since there hasn't been any rain in the first half of this year. I'm afraid I can't endure these days anymore, and the court hasn't ignored me either. The news I've heard is that the wealthy families in the city have taken care of what needs to be taken care of, sold what needs to be sold, and taken refuge in the south. We probably have to go south now. We want to have a meeting in the whole village in the next few days to see if we can sell what's valuable, what needs to be sold, and what needs to be cleaned up. Then we can buy some grain. We can't buy all the grain anymore, but we need to keep some silver money for road use. The village chief glanced at Chin Sini and said, Sister-in-law. If you need any help, just say, Brother, this person has shown kindness to everyone when he is alive. Chin Sini nodded and said, Hmm, okay, big brother. I'll work hard for you to take care of me in the future. The village chief nodded at Chin Sini and said, Well, as the village chief, I also know that you've been lying there for so long, almost going with my brother. Now that you want to take care of the children, they still have to rely on you to survive. It seems that we can't endure these days anymore. God won't give us a way to survive. They say that God can't starve a blind sparrow, as long as we work hard, we'll have food to eat. But this year, I think many people are going to starve to death. A few days ago, two families in our village had already started selling children and women. I couldn't salvage it. If it were in a good year, I wouldn't let them sell people. Selling them now might save lives, otherwise they would starve to death. It's better to sell them to give our children a chance to eat and our family some food. I can't buy a lot of water even if I have money now. Look at the old well in our village, it hasn't dried up since I can remember. Surprisingly, it has dried up this year. The only way to survive in our village, the old well, will also run out of water. If we don't escape famine, the remaining grain will last for another month or two, and there won't be much to eat. Sigh. I really don't know what to do. If there's more, I won't talk about it. Take a look at the preparations that need to be made. Tomorrow, next to the old well in the village, let's have a meeting together to discuss and see how to proceed. If you have something to do, ask the boss to come to my house and make a noise. I have to hurry home and get busy. You are also preparing to tell the children not to wander around outside and to go to the mountains to dig for more food. Also, look at the unused tables and chairs at home. If you can pawn them, pawn them quickly. If it's too late, you won't be able to pawn for much money. It's estimated that other villages will also flee. Hurry up and put them back in pawn. I have some money to rely on to survive, and it will probably be very difficult to escape next. If there is more, I won't say anything. If there is anything, let the boss call me. The village chief let out a leisurely sigh and walked away with his hands behind his back. Chin Sini looked at the back of the village and finally regained her senses. Big brother, thank you. The village chief shook his head as he walked, then waved his hand and said, hurry up and get ready. The sound of heavy footsteps is getting further and further away. At this moment, Chin Sini suddenly remembered their second son. Looking at him, I don't know where his eyes are drifting or where his thoughts are flying. Staring blankly, lost in thought. I don't know what I'm thinking either. Chin Sini roared, Second, come over and kneel in front of your father's tablet. The second person looked at Chin Sini incredulously and said, Mom, I'm not wrong. Chin Sini glared at him fiercely and said, That's right, you just gave someone a head blow and blood flow. If someone really died, you thought you could run away. That's your father, who has earned this reputation for our family. Do you want your father to die without peace? Go, kneel down, hurry up, boss, boss, drag the second brother over and let him kneel. He can't get up until it's dark. Let him reflect and think carefully about where he went wrong. 
The boss opened his mouth wide and looked at his mother incredulously, Hmm, I know your mother. I'll take the second son to daddy's tablet and have him kneel down properly. Chin Sini watched as the boss opened her mouth again to say something, so she quickly waved her hand to let him drag the second brother down. Chin Sini glanced at the eldest daughter. In law and said, First daughter. In law, I'll come in and rest for a while. When everyone in the family is here, you can call me out. We also need to have a meeting to discuss what to do better next. The eldest daughter. In law was constantly in a daze when she was suddenly called out, which made her realize. Okay, mother, you go rest. I'm here. Chin Sini returned to the house and closed the door, thinking carefully about what to do next. She originally thought she couldn't sleep, but ended up falling asleep again in a daze, probably because these bodies were too tired. Chin Sini rubbed her sleepy eyes and woke up feeling really comfortable. Stretching lazily, well, my thoughts turned around for a moment. Chin Sini felt tired dragging a large family, but there was no way she could do it. Who let her occupy the mother's body? Let's just enjoy the hardships. Chin Sini pushed open the heavy door and watched as the sun in the distance had already set, only the afterglow of the setting sun reflected on the earth, shining brightly. It's really beautiful. But the rice fields and the trees by the village have no trace of vitality, and everywhere is desolate and cool. Corresponding to such a dazzling afterglow, what a sharp contrast. Jia Jia, Dejuan was playing in the yard when he saw Qin Sini and ran over. Qin Sini saw them and took out a small handkerchief from her pocket, wrapped in some sugar cubes. She took out two pieces of sugar and before they saw anything, she stuffed them into her mouth one by one. Shu, don't talk, eat quickly, she said they smiled sweetly and said, thank you, milk. When Qin Sini first woke up, she greedily took it out and picked it up with a small handkerchief, putting it in her pocket. Chin Sini looked around and said, Have all the family members come back. Jia Jia smiled and said, All three uncles have returned, and my aunt has also returned. Okay, you two are so good. Go ahead, call them all. Let's have a simple meeting. The siblings happily jumped and went to call out. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Family Meetings You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Family Meetings Watching the two sensible and obedient little ones go to call someone, Chin Sini comforted her, at least these two little ones were not provided. It's okay, okay. At this moment, when I saw my youngest child, I ran towards her with tears in my eyes. Mom, you finally woke up. Just now, I wanted to go inside and see you. My sister dot in dot law said she wouldn't let me disturb your rest. Is everything okay now? I'm so scared. She hugged the youngest child and comforted him, hmm, it's okay, it's okay. Look at me, I'm not doing well here. It's okay, I can't die. Your father said to let me live well and not let me go with him. Let me take you through well. Originally, I wanted to go with your father, but now it seems impossible. Without me, your father is afraid that your whole family won't be able to live. The world is so difficult, how could there have been someone in charge? That's how I can live well again. Old Si Xiaoluo has also returned from the private school, with expressions of disappointment, sadness, and happiness all written on his face. I guess it's because I feel lost and sad that I can't go to school anymore. Seeing his mother still alive, I should be quite happy, after all, the original owner was very kind to the very good character and academic fourth. Mother, I'm back, Lao Si exclaimed in confusion the third Xiaolei helped the second Xiao Guang limp over. I saw the second child and my heart trembled, after all, he was also a spoiled child of the original owner. This second person has clear eyebrows and beautiful eyes, is gentle and refined, with a small pear blossom on his side face. He smiles like the old man Yusheng from the original owner. It's just a disaster year, my face is waxy yellow and my cheekbones are quite abrupt. Clearly lacking in nutrition. 
Chin Sini couldn't hold back her mother's kindness when she saw the second brother. The fourth brother will move a chair for your second brother and let him sit down. Standing there will make people look flustered. Don't hurt yourself, it will drag everyone down when fleeing. The second brother secretly glanced at her mother, harboring resentment in his heart. Mom, how did it turn out? Since waking up, it's like a different person. No matter what I did wrong before, they always protected me. Is it true that, as my mother said, things have changed a lot after seeing my father? As soon as this gets better, just tidy me up well. Chin Sini glanced at the eldest daughter. In law and said, The eldest daughter. In law, as well as all of you, bring a stool and sit down. Everyone responded, All right, mom. Chin Sini saw them sitting in rows one by one, sat down, cleared her throat, Let's talk about it. What should we do next? Your village chief and uncle said that there will also be a village meeting tomorrow, and we need to talk about some issues related to famine escape. This afternoon, your uncle also talked about it in general. She licked her dry and cracked lips, swallowed her saliva, and gathered her thoughts, we should also prepare early. You probably can't go to your private school for the fourth year. When we settle down in the future, we will definitely let you continue studying. Don't think too much about it. Mom, it's okay, I won't be studying anymore, the fourth person shyly lowered his head. Chin Sini looked at the crowd and said, Hmm, then let me share my opinion. The eldest, daughter. In law, eldest, and a few of you have put all the valuable things at home under proper management. Tomorrow, the eldest and second will be pushed to the town as pawns. They will all be treated as dead pawns. After pausing for a moment, he said, By the way, that car can't be pawned anymore. It's necessary for us to have a handy cart when we're on the run, otherwise we'll have to rely on people to carry it on our backs. We'll either starve or die. We'll keep four or five bowls, a pot, and the water bag that your father left unsold before he passed away. We'll also keep this one. Then, each person will pack two sets of clothes, shoes, and socks. Then, there's a pile of books left by your father, choose a rare book and the rest will be pawned. It's estimated that this can be pawned for some money. Lao Si's face turned red and he pulled at it eagerly, Mom, this book cannot be sold. It's all the wealth that my dad has praised for his whole life. Even when he's sick, he's not willing to sell it. Chin Sini gave Lao Si a comforting look and said, Don't worry, listen to me finish. This book can't be eaten or drunk, holding it is a burden. What's the point of holding a few books when you starve to death? Your father said, when it's critical, sell it. This is also your father's last wealth left for us. We can't let down your father's hard work. Lao Si gave a bitter smile, knowing that it was useless to say anything more. He could only helplessly say, hmm, okay, listen to me. Chin Sini also breathed a long sigh of relief, afraid that the few of them would accept their father's most precious legacy and not let go. At least only the fourth person opposed it for a while. After all, he was young and not as focused, so he was more likely to deceive. I guess the other few are also interested in learning, otherwise why would they remain silent? Seeing that everyone else remained silent, Chin Sini continued, if everyone else has no objections, then let me continue. Tomorrow, the eldest wife, the third, and I will go around the mountains and see if there is anything else we can eat. Let's explore more, just like watching our nephews and children at home. As if looking pitifully at her mother, mother, I also have to follow up the mountain tomorrow to find food. Chin Sini pinched her small cheeks, which seemed to have little flesh, and smiled, saying, you don't even have a few ounces of flesh on your face. You're all starving and skinny. You've been sent up the mountain yet, haven't you been blown away by the wind? Obedient. Take Jia Jia and De Zhuang with you at home. By the way, there's another more important task for you to take care of. Otherwise, what should we do if our already small possessions are stolen again? Your three tasks are very important, and the most important ones for the whole family have been entrusted to you. 
Can you complete such an important task? There is a reward for completing it. As she spoke, she took out a small handkerchief from her arms and shook it. I have sugar cubes here. The three of you stay at home and watch the house obediently. Each person has one piece of sugar. How about that? Jiajia and Dajuang have eaten it before and know that this candy is very delicious. The two of them held their aunt's hand and shook it vigorously, Auntie, Auntie, let's listen to you at home. How about we stay at home and watch the house? As if her eyes were shining brightly, she stared straight at the small handkerchief, smacking her lips and tongue. N.N., okay, you two must be obedient, otherwise I'll hit your butt. They happily held their aunt's hand and said, Okay, okay, we'll listen to her. The children here are really easy to coax, they can handle three small ones with just a few sugar cubes. Chin Sini recalled the memories of the original owner and thought that Yuxing had been giving his second and third son some small money to spend every few days before his death, which led to two thugs who didn't do anything serious and played around everywhere. The eldest couple is honest. Apart from occasional money from Yusheng, he also buys things for his family and doesn't have much money in hand. Qin Sini's eyes rolled and she came up with a plan. Second and third, you guys hang out all day. Do you have any money in your hands? You have to pay it in. The boss knows you don't have much money, so just keep it in your own hands. The rest is fine. If you have any good suggestions, let's talk about them. Just finished speaking, just look at the second one, the third one is about to explode, end of this chapter. Chapter 8 Disputes in Meetings You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Disputes in Meetings The second and third are not the ones who are at a loss. They immediately shouted, Mom, we don't have money. Besides, we have ten or eight won for you, which is not enough to buy a pound of grain. Chin Sini raised her voice and said, What are you shouting about? You eat and drink from home all day, why are you idle, not doing anything, and how can you get some money out of it? Don't think I don't know. When your father was here, he didn't give you too much money to spend. He didn't even ask you for medicine at the end. Others don't know how much money you have, but I know it very well. Tomorrow morning, I want to see all your money, Otherwise don't blame me for turning my face and not recognizing anyone. Humph. Stop talking, mom has changed a lot since I woke up, like a different person. Didn't you see me kneeling all afternoon? If it weren't for a meeting, I probably would still be kneeling there, murmured the second person as he pulled at the third person who was still talking the third person looked at his mother in confusion, and then looked at the second person in confusion. The second person glanced at him and hesitated, listen to me, let's figure it out later. Isn't there still one night left? The third person nodded helplessly. Chin Sini watched the small movements of the two of them without even noticing. She scanned the crowd for a moment, and when she saw the second and third, they both shrank their necks, as if afraid of being discovered by her. Why didn't you say anything? I still dare not say anything. Then I'll call each one and listen to your opinions. Chin Sini looked at the boss and said, Boss, you are now the pillar of the family. Let's talk about it. The boss scratched his head and said, Mom, I'll listen to you. You can do it. Looking at the boss's bewildered expression, Chin Sini is also worried. It's all because the dead old man is too capable. These sons are honest and have such solid eyes. Those who have many hearts and minds don't do anything and wander around. Chin Sini glanced at the second person and said, Second person, come and talk about it. You usually have a lot of crazy ideas. The second person's eyes kept spinning around, Mom, what else is valuable in our house? Chin Sini picked up a broken broom from the ground and threw it at him. You haven't picked up your bunch of tsangzi yet. You're actually thinking about my mother. I won't cut you off. How much of your family's wealth is there that you don't count? You think your father is sick and has spent so much money, and there's nothing else he can do. Although his kneeling leg hurt, 
the second person quickly dodged and said, Mom, do you have something to say? Don't take any action. I was wrong and won't worry about it anymore. Chin Sini snorted, I'm asking if you have any good ideas or suggestions. You have donkey hair in your ears and don't understand human language. You want me to use a stick to poke you. If you have something to say, just let it go. Don't be fooling around there. The second son thought to himself, before, my mother used to be gentle and gentle, speaking softly and never getting angry. What's wrong? After going through life and death, she said all kinds of rude things. It seems that I need to reply well. I can't have any thoughts that I shouldn't have. If I continue to live like before, I'm afraid I won't have my good fruit to eat. The second person pondered for a moment and said, I won't speak recklessly, I won't speak recklessly. We should follow the crowd, don't we? The crops follow the crowd. Let's see what everyone does and we'll do it. This is guaranteed to be right. Watching the second person speak seriously. I don't know, I thought it was really well considered. Chin Sini had already seen through his careful thinking, and she was afraid of being beaten by her. If she said something ambiguous, it was definitely right. Chin Sini stared at him and said, You seem to be flustered all day with nothing to do. Say something like this to pass me off and focus all your thoughts on that vulgar thing. How come you don't know how to keep your mind focused and grow towards the right path? What's the use of having a brain? It's like playing a ball. The second son didn't expect to be seen through by his mother for his cleverness, and felt so guilty. Mom, why do you say that to me? I'm at least your son. Chin Sini snorted twice, I don't want someone as big as you. Put your mind on me and don't keep playing tricks on me. I used to have your father around, so I didn't bother to care about you. It's different now. If anyone offends me, they will peel off their skin. You all weigh it for me. This sentence was spoken by Chin Sini on her behalf. Alas, the original owner is so big, these are all divine horses and bear children, it's hard to describe in a single word. She suppressed her anger and said, stay on the side. The second person breathed a sigh of relief and said, All right, Mom, I'll listen to you. Chin Sini turned her head and looked at Lao San, Lao San, come and share your thoughts. The third brother became obedient when he saw his second brother being weak. Dogleg smiled and chuckled, Mom, what do you say to me? I dare not go west if you point me in the east, and I dare not catch chickens if you ask me to drive the dog. As long as you command, I will never frown when going up the mountain of swords and down the sea of fire. Watching the third person still talking confidently, he quickly stopped and said, All right, all right, don't make any fuss about me here. Since that's the case, if you're going up the mountain with me tomorrow, just follow my command. Don't be cowardly then. The third person secretly spat at himself, causing trouble again. He gritted his teeth to himself and said, Hmm, don't worry, mom. Whatever you say, what will I do? I won't hesitate. Chin Sini waved her hand and asked him to shut up. Since you listen to me, now roll the calf for me and shut up. The third person closed his mouth in frustration and didn't dare to speak again. Chin Sini changed her motherly face and said, Old C, you have more knowledge when studying outside. Let's talk about it. The fourth brother scanned his brothers and looked at them all with their heads hanging down like quails. His heart trembled and he thought about how to express himself, today is the last class, and the teacher said, let's not go again in the future. The teacher will also go south for refuge. If we have the chance to meet in the south, we can continue to study with the teacher. Sir, the border war is currently chaotic and tight, and there is no extra food and grass to transport us through the difficulties. Escape is inevitable, so let's prepare early, otherwise it will only become increasingly difficult if we wait any longer. According to the information inquired by the gentleman, the Chintian Observatory predicted that the possibility of rain in the coming months or even a year was very small. The gentleman did not allow us to spread this news to the outside world, 
fearing it would cause greater panic. According to the gentleman's speculation, it is advisable to leave early. Chin Sini nodded in satisfaction and said, that's right. Let's plan ahead. Since we don't have any unique ideas, let's follow what I said. A few little brats, they all ignored it. Chin Sini finally looked at the eldest daughter. In law and said, first daughter. In law, you can also talk about it. The eldest daughter. In law hesitated and said, Mom, I don't have much knowledge either. Anyway, I have some strength. Whatever you say, I'll do whatever you want. Chin Sini smiled helplessly and said, All right, let's just keep it this way. If there's nothing to do, let's just leave. By the way, Bring your old lady over and let's have a meal together. Maybe your old lady is stir-frying noodles there. Are you going to see if it's finished? If it's not finished, let's take care of it. After stir-frying, leave some for your old lady, and bring back everything else. The eldest daughter dot in dot law exclaimed happily and went. This eldest daughter dot in dot law, whose maternal surname is Lu, has many brothers and sisters in the family. At that time, she looked at Chui Fen honestly, without any frivolous behavior, and her work was also good. She matched the eldest wife perfectly, otherwise it would be difficult to manage the entire world. Seeing everyone still stuck there, Chin Sini said, then let's just leave if there's nothing else to do. Go ahead and do whatever you need to do. They all nodded and left one after another. Chin Sini saw the second person limping and thought for a moment, the second person will come with me into the house. I have something to say to you. The second person was panicked and said, Mom, can you tell me something here? I'm listening. Chin Sini patted the second person's shoulder. Angered at him, why, as a mother, I'm not good at speaking anymore. I won't listen anymore. Come with me. I heard the second son howling, dragging his numb legs and following him step by step. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Conquering Second Brother Feng Xiaowei You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 9 Conquering Second Brother Feng Xiaowei With a creaking sound, Qin Sini pushed open the dilapidated door of the house, her mind spinning rapidly, wondering how to talk to her second brother. She walked and thought about it, so much so that when she reached the front of the Kong, there was no place to walk, and she stopped walking, still standing there straight. Until the second person shouted, Chin Sini finally regained her senses and said, Ah, what's going on? The second person looked at her mother in confusion and said, Mom, didn't you let me in? It's okay, then I'll leave. Seeing the eager look on the second person's face, Chin Sini smiled unhappily and said, Why, I'm not a tiger, I can still eat you. Sit down, it's not that I've been kneeling for a long time, isn't it that my legs don't hurt? Seeing the restrained second son, he walked step by step towards the edge of the Kong and sat down eagerly. He tugged at the corners of his mouth in pain, smiled, and gave a smile that was even uglier than crying. Don't worry, my legs are fine, they'll be fine tomorrow, he said Chin Sini suddenly felt a bit distressed. After all, he was just a child at his age in the end of life. At the age of 16 or 17 in the apocalypse, he was really an immature child. After all, the second one has a good heart. When outsiders talk nonsense, he still maintains his mother's integrity. So we still need to save this delinquent boy into a towering man. Every child in the family cannot give up. Although it is not her own, since she has accepted the kindness of the original owner, she must show sincerity to treat every child around her. Chin Sini repeated her old trick and took out a small handkerchief from her pocket. She picked out a piece of candy from one corner and didn't wait for the second person to react before stuffing it into his mouth. The second person was puzzled and wanted to take it out of his mouth to see what it was. Chin Sini quickly stopped him and said, What I'm giving you is candy. You're not allowed to take it out. Look at how dirty your hands are. Disdainful pointed to his hand. The second person chuckled foolishly, and at this moment, he also tasted the sweetness, feeling happy in his heart. 
The sugar in this place is still very expensive now. I usually can't eat it, although the original owner also loved the children very much, there were no candies for them to eat. At most, during the Chinese New Year, it's good to buy some hospitality items that children can try, but they don't usually have them. Seeing the injured heart of the second son instantly comforted, Qin Sini was also filled with joy. Looking at him happily, Qin Sini gave him a surprise and said, Let me tell you what you did today. The sugar in the second person's mouth instantly stopped being sweet, Mom, me, me. Qin Sini said angrily, Listen to me finish speaking. Seeing him choking there, I laughed and thought to myself, This kid is really impatient and can't hold his breath. We need to hone him more in the future. He gave him a comforting look and said, You did a beautiful job today. The person you beat is very relieved. However, in the future, you must hit people to the pain point, and don't let them be injured. Let them suffer indescribably. Just remember the lesson. If you've beaten your head in blood, let them come knocking at you. Otherwise, your father's good reputation will be ruined by you. In the future, you should have a bit of a brain for everything you do. Don't just know how to do it, make them convinced. This way, they will truly not say anything unpleasant. Do you understand? The second person scratched his head and said, Mom, how can we do that? Chin Sini smiled and wanted to reach out and touch its head, but then withdrew. She thought to herself that such a big child should just forget it. She was preparing to give her second son a good lecture, let's find a different way to solve this problem, instead of pointing out the other person's mistakes directly. Follow the other person's thinking and continue to see the problem on their own. This will make it easier for the other person to accept themselves and not create more enemies for themselves. Mom, what are you saying? Why can't I understand, said the second person in a daze. Chin Sini shook her mind and said, Hi, why did I say so profound? My mother broke it up and told you that you are using someone's way to treat them. For example, in today's incident, if he tarnishes his mother's reputation outside, he can give a courtesy before the enemy. If he says something to me, then you can ask him back. If someone were to say something about your parents in front of you like this, he would definitely say, who, I'll go beat him up. Can you just say that if you say, oh, yourself, then I'm going to beat you up. He might be dumbfounded, and then you can threaten him. If you do it again, follow his method and hit him directly. Of course, the area you hit should not show any damage, and it can still be very painful. Gradually, you can tame him. The second person said, hmm, hmm, I got it. Mom, why are you speaking so eloquently? It sounds really nice. Chin Sini looked at her second son with a silly expression and said, Stinky kid, are you still teasing your mother? The second person saw that his mother was not angry and knew that this matter had been exposed. The heart that was being held was also relieved, and speaking became much more comfortable. Chin Sini breathed a sigh of relief when she saw her second son like this. She was really afraid that there might be a gap between her child and me. Originally, as a soul piercer, she had never even had a romantic relationship in the apocalypse, nor even pulled a small hand. I'm upgrading to become a mother, a grandmother, and responsible for disciplining my children, but I haven't adapted yet. Chin Sini felt happy when she saw that the second son was not bad in nature. With this happiness, she added a few more words, in the future, you should think twice before acting, and consider carefully before taking action. Even if you want to teach someone a lesson, don't let them catch you. As the saying goes, a gentleman seeks revenge, ten years is not too late. Do you think if you beat him up, he won't scold me or say anything about me in the future? Does that mean that when he talks about me or scolds me in the future, he will always be behind your back? making you unable to hear him. Even if someone passes messages to you, what if you beat him up? Can you control others' mouths? You, please have a long mind. Don't be simple-minded and have well-developed limbs. What's the matter? Use your mind more in everything. You say you don't have a long mind all day. Don't be sold by others and help people pay. 
Read more books when you have nothing to do. Reading makes people wise. You don't expect to take the imperial examination. It's also good to have a long mind. Upon hearing this, the second son knew that his mother still had her own feelings. Although my kneeling knee still hurts, it's just for others to see. Let others know that his mother punished this son. Make others speechless and feel happy in their hearts. I didn't expect my mother to be quite dark, did she? The second person saw that his mother had returned to being a loving mother, and the little star in his eyes burst out in an instant. Okay, mom, you're so kind. You want to be healthy and healthy in the future, and I don't want you to go with dad. Do you still have us? Dad has gone, so there's nothing we can do. So, you're okay, you can't leave us alone. Chin Sini thought of being remembered by others, but she was still beautiful in her heart. It seemed that her second son was also filial. Although she was mischievous, at least her nature was not bad. I am quite pleased. Chin Sini gave her second son a reassuring look and said, I know, I know. Didn't we all agree on this? I'll be fine. All right, don't be bored with me. Hurry up and get busy. The second person chuckled and said, Okay, mom, then I'll go. Chin Sini waved her hand and let him out. The second person has many minds and a lively mind, so it's still good to cultivate and cultivate them well. When she was thinking in her own mind, she heard someone talking outside. It turned out to be a wet nurse. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 The First Family Dinner After Soul Piercing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 the first family dinner after soul piercing the wet nurse looked around and said, Where's your mother? The boss looked at the upper room and said, Mom, I'm probably resting. Grandma, please sit down, I'll go call mom. The wet nurse grabbed the boss and whispered, afraid that the boss would call out, Your mother, I guess she's also tired enough this day. Let her rest a little longer. Hearing the nanny and the children laughing happily, I suddenly felt that there was no hope in life, which added a bit of anger and made this gloomy weather see a glimmer of dawn. Upon hearing that the wet nurse had arrived, I thought for a moment and decided not to lie down. Let's get up. Otherwise, they wouldn't be willing to put too much fried noodles in their cooking. Chin Sini tucked her hands around her hair. The hairstyle here is not very easy to comb. That's it, ancient hairstyles are a bit difficult to do. Chin Sini got up and opened the heavy door, slowly walking out. When she saw the wet nurse and children, she whispered quietly, probably afraid of affecting her rest. Chin Sini looked at Yan Yan's wet nurse and said, Mom, you've come over. Upon hearing Chin Sini's voice, the wet nurse looked up at her and said, Sini, did our conversation affect your rest? Chin Sini quickly waved her hand and said, Mom, what are you talking about? I didn't sleep before, but I'm a bit tired. I took a break. Chin Sini looked at Suafin and said, Go make some fried noodles and come and drink. There's not much good food at home either. Suafin stood up and picked up the bag of fried noodles on the ground. As he walked, he said, Mom, I'll go right away. Seeing Chuefin's distant figure, Chin Sini shouted, Put more fried noodles in to ensure that everyone has enough to eat. There are still many things to do tomorrow, and if you don't have enough to eat, it's not exciting. And the wild vegetables you picked today, put them inside. Fearing that Suafin was worried about the food and worried, Chin Sini followed over and saw her daughter. In. La Suafin scooping a few spoons and stirring them in a bowl. Seeing this, one can tell that the eldest daughter. In. La is concerned about food, mainly because there is not much food left now. Chin Sini could only take the initiative to say, Tsuifen, scoop a few more spoons. This way, each person will have to drink a full two bowls. They are now full. When they flee in two days, they will have strength. Tsuifen saw half a bag of fried noodles and felt heartbroken. I got it, mom, she said Tsuifen not only cares about the food, but also dares not oppose her mother's opinion. 
she knows that her mother cares about us. I could only grit my teeth hard, stomp my feet and scoop a few spoons into the bowl, stirring them into batter. After the water boiled, I poured the picked wild vegetables and fried noodles into it and stirred a full pot. Before it was dark, Tsuehua quickly brought the pot to the table in the yard. A few children saw it and quickly went to the kitchen to get bowls and chopsticks. Tsuehua scooped a full bowl for everyone, and now she could only hear the sound of wheezing, wheezing, and moaning, blowing and sucking one by one, as if eating a precious delicacy in the world, with a satisfied smile on her face. It seems that I haven't had a good meal recently, so it's probably the best I've had recently. After the old man went, he had the best and most satisfying meal ever. Chin Sini drank the throbbing fried noodles, which were a bit difficult to swallow. She only drank a small bowl before putting it down. Thinking about stealing some food at night, I would eat less now and give the children more to eat, comforting myself. She didn't believe it when she saw the wet nurse finish a bowl and stop eating, saying she was full. Seeing this, Chin Sini spoke with heartache, Mom, I still have half a bowl left. You can drink it. I just got better today and can't eat too much, otherwise my stomach won't be able to handle it. The wet nurse frowned and said, this won't work. Your body is just fine and you still need nutrition. Can you hold on to this? Hurry up, I'm already full. If you don't eat, I won't dare to ask you to help me tidy up tomorrow. You always say that others are doing things one by one, but how come you end up not eating? Seeing the pained look in the wet nurse's eyes, Chin Sini couldn't force herself to stop eating. She could only eat everything under the wet nurse's gaze. Seeing the wet nurse's heartfelt smile, she also breathed a sigh of relief. She looked at the wet nurse and coquettishly said, Mom. I have a small appetite and really can't eat anymore. I'm afraid I'll feel uncomfortable at night if I eat too much. The wet nurse also knew she couldn't force Sini to eat anymore, so she had no choice but to say, Okay, let's eat these today. Tomorrow, let's see how much silver we can pawn and buy more salt. This way, we'll have a taste. The wet nurse thought she despised eating, but yes, I do despise it, but it's not something that salt can solve. This beautiful misunderstanding, just like this, accidentally found out my dislike for food. Everyone licks the bowl shiny and doesn't need to brush it clean, which saves water I estimated that there wasn't much water left at home. Boss and daughter dot in dot law, how much water is left at home? If there isn't much water, don't wash the dishes. I look cleaner than you do. Suifan looked at the bowl in her hand and blushed slightly, feeling a bit shy. She thought to herself, it was indeed very, very clean. Chuifen looked around again and found that the bowls of others were also very clean. Now she felt a little more at ease. Tsuifen looked up at Chin Sini and said, Mom, there's still half a jar of water at home. Is this bowl really not going to be washed? Well, that's it, Chin Sini nodded decisively the third person saw some bumps in the pot and said, Mom, there's still some in this pot. I'll go pour some water and rinse it. I'll have a drink. Chin Sini stared at Lao San and nodded in silence. The third person jumped up in surprise and went with the pot in hand. Afraid of being snatched away. The eldest wife took advantage of the sunset and quickly tidied up the pots and pans in the kitchen. The wet nurse sat next to Sini and looked at her. She knew the wet nurse, and this was to see how her body was recovering. Okay, there isn't any. I know the wet nurse cares about her, but there are some things that are difficult to ask in front of the child. Chin Sini gently patted the wet nurse's hand to reassure her, Mom, tomorrow my eldest wife and I will go to your house to tidy up our things. Let the boss and the second also push things to the town, and if they can, go ahead and pawn them the wet nurse sighed silently, well, that's all. I'll clean up tomorrow. When will you finish cleaning up? Come over and help. I heard cicadas shouting one after another, cicadas, cicadas. I don't know what else it knows. Everyone who listens is restless and agitated. Looking up at the sky, 
the afterglow of the sunset is also about to disappear into the sky. Chin Sini smiled as she looked at the wet nurse and said, Mom, it's getting dark too. It's not easy to walk on the way. Go back and rest early. I'll have the third person take you home. The wet nurse reached out and looked at her hand, which was almost out of sight. Well, okay, you should rest early too. You're not feeling well yet, don't always try to be too strong. Chin Sini reached out and grabbed the wet nurse's hands. Mother, don't worry, you'll have to escape with me and suffer this time. What else did the wet nurse say? She shook hands hard and shook her head at the wet nurse. The wet nurse patted Sini's hand and said, then I'll leave. Chin Sini let out a sigh and asked the third person to support the wet nurse as she slowly walked home. From a distance, I can still hear the third person there, talking. There is a pit ahead, walking this way, there are stones over there. End of this chapter